Hi everyone, I'm David. And I'm Heather, and we're here to present a beginner's guide to navigating the brand new camera features of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Throughout this video, we're gonna walk you through the latest features, we're gonna demonstrate how to use them and provide some pro insights to ensure you get the most from your flagship iPhone. First, we want to show you a new shortcut that instantly launches the camera from anywhere without the screen even being on, and that is the action button. The action button replaces the mute switch on previous generations, and you can program it in the settings. Simply swipe over to the camera and choose which mode you wanna launch in. And if you prefer to use a third-party camera app, then you can swipe over to shortcuts, go to open app, and choose your choice of app from the list. Now, when you're walking along and you see an unmissable moment, you can simply long press the action button and have the camera ready even before you are. Now let's jump into the camera itself. But before you do any shooting, head to camera settings, go into formats and choose whether you'd like to shoot the modern high format or the traditional JPEG. You'll also see a new photo mode setting exclusive to the 15 Pro Max, where you can choose between 24 and 12 megapixels. We'll call this your default format, and this will change depending on which camera and lens you're using, but more on that a bit later. Next, scroll down and turn on Pro Raw and Resolution Control. This allows you to unlock your iPhone's full creative potential. Now, when you head back over to the camera app, you'll see this raw max icon has appeared. And if you long press it, more resolutions and formats pop up. These are your pro formats. You can quickly switch between them, a tap to shoot in your default format instead. Raw 12 is pro raw at 12 megapixels and max gives you maximum resolution, which is... It depends what lens you're using and what format you're shooting in. And because of this, it's best that we show you each camera and lens one by one. Apple advertises the 15 Pro Max as having the equivalent of seven camera lenses and the ultra wide makes up two of them. There's the normal version of the lens and then there's the macro version, which works automatically when you get close to something. When you get close to something, this macro icon will appear, letting you know the iPhone has switched to the ultra wide camera's macro function. And it'll do this regardless of which camera you've chosen. For example, here I'm using the main camera's one times lens. But as I get close, it switches to the ultra wide camera, but it lets me keep my one times lens perspective by digitally punching in. And if you don't want this to happen, go back into the camera settings, scroll right down to the bottom and turn off macro control. Regardless of how you use it though, the ultra wide camera resolution is always 12 megapixels. Hyf Max, Raw Max, Raw 12 and your default capture setting will all produce a 12 megapixel image. However, the main camera is a completely different story. The one times lens is our third of seven lenses. And here the pro formats make a huge difference because its maximum resolution is 48 megapixels, just like it was on the 14 Pro series. But here, thanks to an improved image processing pipeline, the 15 Pro Max is able to offer improved shooting options. The first improvement is that new 24 megapixel default capture that we saw in the photo mode setting. It creates this new 24 megapixel result by taking a 48 megapixel frame and combining it with a 12 megapixel frame. So you get the best of both. You get a high resolution, highly detailed image with a smaller file size. The one times lens in RAW Max will output the highest resolution your 15 Pro Max is capable of. And you should choose RAW Max when you want to push your files as far as they will go in terms of editing. But only do so if you have a big storage plan because these files are ginormous. Some of them are even upwards of 100 megabytes. And that's often too much. 48 megapixels just isn't appropriate for every single shot. So we have RAW 12. RAW 12 gives you Pro RAW files at 12 megapixels, which are still big, but they're significantly smaller than their 48 megapixel counterparts, and you retain the editing flexibility. Finally, there's Hive Max. 
or JPEG Max, depending on which one you've chosen. Mine's set to Hive, so as you might expect, this will give me a Hive file at the full 48 megapixel resolution. This is a great option if you want truly manageable 48 megapixel files, because they're usually around a svelte three to five megabytes. But there's more to the main camera because it also offers 28mm and 35mm lenses. These are lens options 4 and 5, but they aren't physical lenses, meaning you won't find them on the back of the phone. These are fundamentally digital lenses. Think of them as cropping into the main camera, except they're cropping in before you take the photo instead of afterwards. And yes, since they're essentially cropping in, that means if you choose a max format, you won't get the main camera's full 48 megapixels. The 28 millimeter lens, also known as the 1.2 times, outputs at 35 megapixels. And the 35 millimeter lens, known as the 1.5 times, outputs at 24 megapixels. And while you can capture 12 megapixel raw with them, if you set your default format to 12 megapixels, they won't be available. The two times lens is lens number six, and it too uses part of the main camera's sensor to produce its two times or 48 millimeter frame. And because of this, it's limited to 12 megapixels, regardless of which format you choose. What do you think about this frosted? Oh, I don't think you liked it. <laughs> Walk away. So tell me, Heather. Should you shoot with these lower resolution digital lenses or should you stay at the full 48 megapixel one times frame or does it not make a difference? Well, if you crop in later, you can always make adjustments to reframe or repurpose the image and you can always revert back to the original if you change your mind. Plus, because of the way the main camera sensor works, sometimes, believe it or not, shooting at the full 48 megapixel resolution doesn't always produce the most detailed image. In these examples, you can see how the two times lenses 12 megapixel result has more fine detail than the 48 megapixel result. But this won't always be the case. So it's impossible to make a definitive statement on image quality. Ultimately though, we like using them, don't we? Particularly the two times, because what we found when we've been out shooting is that it's given us an opportunity to visualize and capture a scene that we were about to pass up with just the one times lens because we couldn't visualize that crop later on. Finally, we have the 15 Pro Max's headline camera. It's the 12 megapixel five times telephoto. This is the first of its kind in any iPhone and it lives up to the hype by allowing you to get significantly closer than ever before while providing excellent image quality and pleasing natural bokeh. And you can create depth by shooting past things that are close to the camera. Just something to be aware of though when you're shooting. Watch this, see if you can notice what's happening. I'm in the five times lens here and you can already see it, it happening now. Can you see the frame jumping? That is the iPhone trying to do you a favor. I've told it to be in the 5X lens and it's able to keep that frame, but by using a different lens, the iPhone doesn't think that the 5X is best for this situation, but it wants to keep that same frame. So it's actually jumping to a different lens and punching in. And you can see that when you look at the photos later, you'll see it wasn't taken with the 5X telephoto. It's actually taken with a different one. So you can confirm this by actually putting your finger over the 5X telephoto and you can see it doesn't actually block the frame even though it should. And speaking of bokeh, this is a great opportunity to show you the 15 Pro Max's brand new portraits in photo mode feature. Previously, portrait photos were limited to portrait mode at 12 megapixels, but not anymore. Now, when you're in your default capture format and your 15 Pro Max detects a human, a dog or a cat, a little F will appear in the bottom left corner. And when you tap it, you get a depth preview and you can change the amount of blur, allowing you to capture depth information at 24 megapixels. Not only that, 
When you open the photo in the Photos app, there's a portrait toggle, allowing you to revert it back to a normal photo. So, to wrap up, we've, we've thrown a lot of numbers at you in this video, and I must admit, as someone who upgraded from a 13 Pro Max to the 15 Pro Max, I recognise the camera app instantly. The interface is pretty much the same. But the learning curve is definitely steeper for me. Can I get my head around these, these Pro formats and what resolution is relates to what format and what megapixels is it and things like that. So if you have struggled, like don't worry about it. I've been doing photography for almost 20 years and <laughs> it took me a few minutes. But I, I don't know about you, I love the 15 Pro Max. Yeah, no. The camera, I think it's brilliant. And my, my favorite lens is definitely the five times telephoto because as a portrait photographer, I just love that natural bokeh. I love the, the background compression in that field of view. How about yourself? Yeah, I really like the portraits in photo mode. Yeah. Again, same, I really like the bokeh. It's more realistic and something that my 13 didn't have, it would you know take portraits in 12 megapixels, whereas this one is 24 megapixel, which is a it's game great, changer. Yeah. I love how it, like you say, it's more realistic. It gets all the individual has not every yeah. single time but most of the time it's like wow it looks if you dial it in really nicely the f number it looks really really nice okay. we want to know what's your favorite feature camera feature of the iphone 15 pro max and if you don't have one which one are you looking forward to trying the most and because there's a lot of information in this video if we have glossed over something that you'd like to know more about or if there's something new entirely that you want us to cover we are very very open to hearing what you have to say in the comments and we will try answer your questions and even make future videos based on what you want to know so thank you so much for watching and happy shooting